Question 9 from Section 2 of the 2022 Higher Physics Examination from the SQA. The apparatus shown is used to investigate photoemission. Electromagnetic radiation is incident on metal X. And you can see that in the diagram, the electromagnetic radiation passes through uh, a special quartz window onto metal X. And you're going to get the photoelectric effect. The, ele the, the electrons are going to be emitted from the surface of the metal. And this apparatus can be used to determine the maximum kinetic energy which the photoelectrons carry. Just a quick reminder for you, there's the little equation there. EK stands for the kinetic energy of the photoelectrons, that's the emitted, the ejected electrons. HF is the energy of the incoming photon that strikes the metal plate releasing the electron. And HF0 is really the work function, that is the minimum energy needed in order to eject an electron from the surface of that metal. The question goes on to say, the frequency of the electromagnetic radiation uh, is varied and the maximum kinetic energy of the photoelectrons emitted from metal X is determined for a range of frequencies. So for the range of frequencies, the maximum kinetic energy is measured and that can be easily done by that appliance, that, that apparatus. The graph of the situation is shown here. It shows the graph of the maximum kinetic energy on the y-axis and along the x-axis you have the frequency of the light which is shown on to the metal. And you can get that data there producing that graph. Now, we want to be able to find the threshold frequency for one mark. And the threshold frequency occurs when really there is no kinetic energy, there's no electrons ejected. And if there's no electrons ejected, they won't have any kinetic energy. And therefore, to do that, we have to produce the graph straight down until it cuts that x-axis. So it's going to be like that there. So now we know that position here is going to be the threshold frequency, which means the minimum frequency a photon must have to eject electrons from that particular metal plate. Our next problem is to work out the scale of the graph. And you can see that every two squares on the graph horizontally stands for one times 10 to the power 14 hertz. So you can see if we just draw that in here, you can see from here, you've got five, every two squares is an extra one. So it's five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So that's how you work out the scale. So when it strikes this point here, the graph hits this point here, it's really striking at seven times 10 to the power 14 hertz. So we now know that the threshold frequency is equal to 7.0 times 10 to the power 14 hertz. That is the threshold frequency for that particular metal. Question 9 continued part B. The work function of different metals is shown in the table. There you have the metals on the left hand column, potassium, calcium, zinc and gold. And you've got the work function, measuring joules, and they're listed on the right hand column. Now, once we know the threshold frequency, we can work out the work function of the metal. Just to recap again, we have the kinetic energy of the photoelectron emitted is equal to HF minus HF0. And HF0 is the work function, so we can mark that down like that. The work function is equal to HF0. Now, we've already established what the work function is from the graph. The work function is equal to 7 times 10 to the power 14 hertz. So all we have to do now then is plug in the plug in the values into the equation. The work function, just write it out in full here. The work function is equal to HF0. HF0. Now H is Planck's constant. And we know Planck's constant is given that value there, 6.63 times 10 to minus 34 joule seconds. So 6.63 times 10 to minus 34, and it's going to be joule seconds. And the threshold frequency is 7 times 10 to power 14, 7 times 10 to power 14 hertz. And a hertz is really equal to a second to the minus one. So the seconds will cancel out the hertz and you're left with joules. So if we do that in a calculator. The work function for that particular material is going to be of the order of 4.64 times 10 to the power minus 19 joules. We can round it up to just two significant figures, 4.6 
times 10 to the power minus 19 joules. Now we go and look up our table. We can see that it's not potassium, it's not calcium. Well, it is calcium, but calcium is 4.6 times 10 to minus 19 joules. So that particular metal we're looking at is calcium. So metal X is calcium, and we've justified it by working out the work function given the threshold frequency for that particular metal, and it comes out to be exactly good to the work function for calcium. Bye.